Welcome back, everyone. So, concerning the school children that a uh, bandit kidnapped, so right now, Shegumi have offered to meet the bandit that kidnapped the school children to negotiate to dialogue with them. So, on our right television, he said that um, even the our so called the federal government know all these bandits that they need to negotiate, you know, to really ask these people what is their problem, why are they acting like this and this and that. Hey, even some persons have already come out and said that those bandits, they are no longer in the Kaduna state, like they have moved out from Kaduna state. So they are trying to tell us that they knew that the bandits were in Kaduna state. And right now they are telling us that they are no longer there, which means they know the whereabouts of the bandits as well as where they take these uh, school children to. Now Nigerians are asking a lot of questions, even According to the news, the bandit, the called Tinubu Media Ed, said that they need a one billion. So people are asking, how did they get a Tinubu's a media ed number? A lot of questions, my people. Let me just allow you guys so that you can watch what the rice team said. Especially, I just love what uh, Abat Ruben said here. Honestly, he really, you know, touched where we need to touch because giving this uh, bandit a uh, ransom, you know, rehabilitating them, it has not really solve the problem instead the kidnapping and all the insecurity keep increasing every day by day so now federal government need to take action if truly they don't know anything about this banditry and kidnapping they really need to do something because enough is enough these people they are criminals and they need to be treated like criminals and also in another story where Tinubu said that things are getting better like hey Ufa I really finish him here he said that maybe Tinubu is dreaming that was hilarious. My people, let me just allow you guys so that you can watch what Rufai said as well as Dr. Abad. Yeah, I'll be right back. Terrorists who kidnapped over 250 students in Kaduna State have demanded 1 billion naira for their release. A spokesperson for the community, Jubril Aminu, said he received a call from the kidnappers on Tuesday, March 12th, demanding the ransom. The defense headquarters, on the other hand, on Thursday, attributed the delay in the rescue of abducted school children in Kaduna and Sokoto states to a late report of the incident to the response team in the affected communities. The director of defense, media and operations, Major General Edward Buba, made this known while briefing journalists on Thursday. He also noted that the hostages are being held in locations that are difficult to get to and described the terrorists as cowards. The situation is, however, indicative of the desperation of these terrorists to avoid troops onslaught by all means. You may recall that in recent times, troops have decimated several of the terrorist leaders, their commanders and their foot soldiers and are fast closing in on several others. The terrorists have exhibited gross cowardice by going for such soft targets to impede troops' advances. Well, all right, I think that defense headquarters is right there calling the terrorists cowards because, I mean, they kidnapped school children, young children between the ages of five and seven. I mean, they are real cowards, we would say that. But also, if you recall, last uh, month, I believe uh, Boderi Ishiaku was one of the, um, you know, terrorists that was neutralized in a gondwell, uh, actually, in Kaduna State. So that was a win for, you know, the um, federal government as well as the military. But people are asking, where are these young children? Let me pick pull up a map of uh, Nigeria with this comment uh, going around on WhatsApp. Uh, this person wrote, this is the map of Nigeria showing the states and FCT. It is obvious from this map that Kaduna State is not on any part of Nigeria's international boundaries. It is landlocked. Where did the kidnappers pass through? And where did they go to after allegedly kidnapping 280 people? What this means is that these bandits are squarely inside our land space in Nigeria. How many bandits will it take to kidnap 300 people? How can such a group move with their victims without security operatives detecting them? Who is offering cover to these bandits and kidnappers? Nigeria, are we not sleeping on a time bomb that's already ticking? Well, in the meantime, the governor of Kaduna State, Ubasani, on Thursday, 
said that the kidnapped children from Kaduna were moved to neighboring states. He was speaking to state house correspondents after breaking the Ramadan fast with President Tinubu. Most of these children that were kidnapped were moved to another neighboring states in the case of Kaduna. So we had some good deliberation and I have no doubt in my mind we will work together and uh, towards the success of the return of the children by the grace of God. All right, Uba Sani here is saying that these terrorists are not in Kaduna State. I guess he has intelligence report. In the meantime, Islamic cleric Sheikh Ahmad Gumi, who was on our nightly news program, Newsnight, on Thursday, called on the federal government to use non-kinetic measures to negotiate with the terrorists, insisting that the government knows who they are. The, the government and everybody knows their leader. In fact, there's a book, I Am a Bandit, by one Murtala, an academician, he listed more than 160 bandit leaders. We know their leaders by their names, but you don't know their foot soldiers. You don't know them, all of them. So you just know their leaders. You don't know the foot soldiers. So if you don't know the foot soldiers, how can you be fighting? They can just come in as civilians into the town and go out as, uh, and then fight you back. Uh, we, we need to look at this seriously. It's, not, it's more than just meeting in, 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 uh, uh, in uh, Abuja. It's more than that. We have to drop to the field locally and see how things can be moved. And one thing what I realized, the government is not ready to spend money on, on non-kinetic, but it's ready to spend trillions and trillions on the kinetic aspect. And you know who benefits from that. Non-kinetic, is, it is the, victim, the, the, the victims and, uh, and, and the, the, the bandits that will benefit from the social program by building schools, building hospitals. But when you put money in the military, it is our generals, uh, unfortunately, to say that, uh, that, that benefit. Well, Sheikh Ahmad Gumi here, you know, we all know that he's always called for non-kinetic measures to, um, you know, for the federal government to also negotiate with the bandits. He was on our show yesterday. He did also say that he does not agree with the payment of ransom. But you heard him there, Ayo, saying that the military, we all know, who these terrorists are, but you know, he's saying that they don't know their foot soldiers. But at this point, that tweet, that comment I read from uh, uh, that map of Nigeria in Kaduna State, where we know that these people are a lot in the landlocked area. Where are our children? Ojo, that's why we, we keep saying that there must be some form of complicity. There are certain questions that must be asked when it comes to banditry and the fact that it hasn't been contained yet. Mm -hmm. We keep hearing, especially from retired generals, that this issue can be contained. It can be dealt with. It is possible. However, we keep seeing that despite the amount of money allocated, ransom paid in the past, we haven't seen any, we haven't made any headroad. The first thing I can mention is uh, Kaduna being land landlocked. Very fantastic observation. Mm -hmm. We've asked the question here, and from eye reports um, for people who were on ground that day, that a number of bandits came. They surrounded the school. So they were not a few gentlemen yes. or a, a few men. They were huge in number. And then they came on motorcycles, and then they abducted about over 200 pupils and teachers. And they made their way out of that vicinity with a, um, a military formation, or military uh, formation just 30 minutes away from there. And what we're hearing is that, oh, they weren't informed on time. Knowing that these areas are key areas, they're areas that have been, you know, that have experienced attacks in the past, one would imagine that already there would be um, things in place or um, the, the military would make provisions in place to ensure that that place is fully secure. That wasn't the, that wasn't the case. In addition to that, the big question, who is sponsoring these terrorists? That's the big who, who question. Is, um, who is giving them the weapons, the sophisticated weapons that they have? How do they have the temerity to demand one billion naira and then even be generous with the number of days to pay? It means that there's no confidence that they'll be apprehended within the time limit. Because if you know that there are people on your uh, who are chasing you, you mm. would say within 24 hours, 48 hours, because you know that they're hot on your chase. But yeah, even the generosity of time, it means in 21 days, we still expect that we'll still have these children with us or these captive. That's a big statement there yes. for not looking at that. That the fact that they have the confidence and the boldness to ask for such amounts of money with a long term. I'm hoping 
that the Nigerian military or yeah. our security agents will take this challenge. Yes. What we're looking forward to is enough with these recommendations, talks, closed door meetings, open door meetings and the likes. Let us see action. Yes. That's what we are looking forward to. Right. I do subscribe to both kinetic and non-kinetic. I don't think it should be non-kinetic alone because I think that this must be responded with force. We have to come down very hard yeah. on these um, bandits. Yeah. But also, he makes a very solid point. Even though I don't like saying that he makes a solid point. But I, I, I mentioned that earlier. We must address the issues underlying poverty, mm -hmm. lack of education, lack of awareness. We must engage the locals. We must engage traditional and, re and religious lead, um, um, yes. rulers and um, leaders in the states and ensure that they have a buy-in to know that we are protecting our people. Absolutely. It doesn't make any sense. When, we come, when it comes to um, intelligence, information, you must engender goodwill yeah. and en engender their trust as well because there's also a trust deficit. Mm -hmm. Build schools. Let the people not be la languishing in poverty, making it attractive to be recruited by these um, by these um, bandits. So both very important, but not one without the other. I like I the think points that you made, actually, Ayo, when you talked about the culprits must be brought to book. Remember when this incident happened in Kaduna State, we were asking, what happened to the uh, kidnappers that, that, that took our Chibok girls? Yes. What was the sanction? Yeah. What was the punishment? Who are they? Well, in the meantime, the First Lady of Nigeria, Senator Oluremi Tinubu, has likened the spate of kidnappings in Nigeria to war. Remi Tinubu was speaking during a visit by senators representing the three senatorial districts of Lagos to the presidential villa on Thursday. She also reiterated her call for capital punishment on kidnappers. I think we can make stiffer laws. You know, what, you know, we have to really it's like we're at war. Yeah. That's what it is. Because, you know, there are various things that, you know, would lead to something. We're at war with all these people coming to pick our children. Yeah. So I want to see the National Assembly taking a more robust stand that, you know, this has to be, you know, uh, capital punishment should, should, should be in place. And I'm not mixing words with that. Because people who will take your children is like taking your heart. So for a mother and, um, you know, why are you taking the children? You know, to me, it's something that we have to look into and also look into how we can help our people to ameliorate these times. But there are better days ahead. But my advice is I don't want people to get used to handouts. All right, the First Lady there has called for capital punishment for kidnappers. Um, the President also said that, you know, the federal government was not going to pay a dime to the kidnappers. Let me take a reaction before I come to both of you. This is from Kenny, who wrote, It is time Nigeria take a really tough stand against ransom payment. Our country will fall more into a fragile state if ransom payment continues. Nigerians should accept that we are at war against Boko Haram terrorists and all other bandits who demand ransom to fund their crime. Like in every war, sacrifices will be made. While structural approach is taken to eliminate attackers who refuse to stop, members of the Nigerian army, police, who have interests in kidnap activities in any form, whether directly or by providing support, should know that their days are numbered. I love that tweet, um, Dr. Bati Rufai. I don't know who wants to go first. The fact that, you know, the federal government has said that they are not going to pay ransom. I mean, I don't know if this is just lip service at this point because there are children out there as Before well. Now, right. Under the Buhari administration, we saw the federal government of Nigeria adopting a policy of reconciliation, rehabilitation, whereby the government was sewing uniforms for terrorists and bandits and keeping them in rehabilitation camps yeah. and claiming that these people will be reintegrated into society and that they will become good citizens. That strategy did not work. Mm -hmm. I think many Nigerians will be glad to hear from President Tinubu speaking like the commander-in-chief that he is that the ecosystem of criminality must not be condoned either by the payment of ransom or by the rehabilitation, so-called, of uh, terrorists mm -hmm. and bandits. So uh, President Tinubu, you know, is right on that in that regard. I agree with him. In the same manner in which I agree with Senator Luremi Tinubu, mm -hmm. that there should be stiffer penalties for terrorists. People who have shown that the make of human kindness does not flow within them. 
and that they are ready to make money from the violation of other people's dignity. And she was challenging the three senators from Lagos State who visited her, Senator Abiru, Senator Wasiu Eshilokun, and uh, Senator Adebule. Mm -hmm. Now, what I expect the, sen the three senators to do, either collectively or individually, is to follow up on Mrs. Uh, Tinubu's charge, to go and uh, ask for further amendments of the Terrorism Prevention and Prohibition Act of 2022, to have stiffer penalties for terrorists and bandits. President Tinubu, while he was having the IFTA with the, uh, with the visitors, the governors, said that, well, things are getting better. Uh, brighter they, they, and brighter. They, they were, yes, that the, the cloud is clearing, this and that. Well, I don't know what he means by that. That's one part of it, that, uh, of his uh, statement that I disagree with. Because if you were any one million naira uh, in July uh, 2023, that your one million naira now will be less than 400,000 naira. Absolutely. So how do you tell Nigerians that things are brighter and brighter? People are suffering from a pandemic of empty pockets of, uh, of epidemic uh, proportions. So, I mean, that's the only part of it that I, I, I think the president was exaggerating this thing about uh, hope. The governor of Kaduna State, Ubasani, was saying that the bandits have been relocated away from Kaduna State. How did he know that? And if they were relocated from uh, Kaduna State, 287 mm -hmm. persons, is it that in the whole of Kaduna State that is facing serious crisis of insecurity mm -hmm. that there are no checkpoints? Buba, my so the, 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 the governor also needs to come back thing. to us to tell us, you know, where they were relocated to. As for Major General uh, Buba, Buba, where he has a security person, he, what he said, if I read him correctly, is that the uh, bandits, the, the uh, abducted persons have been taken to difficult locations, mm -hmm. but that it's not, those such locations are not out of reach. Mm -hmm. I don't expect him as a trained uh, security uh, chief to come to the public and say, this is where they are located. That's not their training. Right. Uh, that's not the way they are trained. But he, he, he gave uh, details of, uh, you know, the efforts that they are making, yes. how they, are, they have uh, been able to decimate the ranks, and he gave specific details. I like that, you know, in terms of defense headquarters, giving an account to the Nigerian people. But he then over-exaggerated the matter when he said the, the bandits, the terrorists, as he calls them, know that we mean business. Uh, uh, General, sorry. I don't think that they know that you mean business. Otherwise, you know, they, they, they will not have this level of impudence. They will not have this level of uh, temerity. The military, they've done a lot. Yes, we keep thanking them. But if the message is getting to the uh, terrorists, they will not have the a courage to keep abducting people one state to the other, you know, with such frequency. Yeah. That means there's a lot more that needs to be done. Whether they call it kinetic or non-kinetic, the residual point is that the Tinubu government must back up the president's promises with a political will. Yes. And that political will must be demonstrable and must be measurable. Mm -hmm. For us, the people of Nigeria, who sit here every morning to analyze the uh, 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 the issues, almost to the point of saturation, yeah. to be able to come back and say that, well, President Tinubu, we have seen the measurable, demonstrable evidence of uh, political will, yeah. and we'll, it will be our duty to say so. All right, Rufai. Uh, so as for President and, and you know, uh, happy Ramadan to all of our Muslim brothers, and I know this season is one of supplication and intense reflection for them, and um, it's something we should all embrace what Ramadan preaches, peace and unity. I think it's in that spirit, President Nubu was dealing with hope. I'm sure when he was saying things were getting better, maybe he was singing a song in his mind. Things are getting better. That nursery rhyme. For the Lord is oh, on that oh, throne. Things song. are getting better. Things that. are getting better. I am going higher. So I'm sure that's what he was probably singing. But reality is different. Yeah. Our currency has been greatly devalued. The standard of living has plummeted. Insecurity is on the high since he came in. All the indices look like things are getting worse. Of even the business sector. Yes, there's been some gains, but there have been more losses than gains. We cannot deceive ourselves. 
So as regards that, the president didn't get it right. But if he was singing the song, things are getting better, probably yes. I know it's a song of hope and optimism. But secondly, as regards the insecurity, so there are a couple of ideas I'm going to throw out there. Number one will be, I get the slant of um, Sheikh Gumi as regards the problems on ground. Those problems have not been there. I have not been there today. They've been there for a while. In fact, I will link them to industry. There was an assessment done as regards the shutdown of the textile factories in the north back in the days and the direct effects and the correlation and insecurity. So once empowerment and businesses started to shut down and industries that employed a large amount of people, then you started to have a rise of insecurity. And the first point of this shutdown was the early 80s when the economy started to plummet. And that's when you had the first major riot, the Metisani riots. In fact, the study was done then that indicated that the reason for that riot was because of the economic situation. So this problem dates back to many years. Yeah. You are just having fertile ground every day in children's at Almagery and everything. So I think I get the analogy of the argument of Let's bring back empowerment to that area. And it goes back to these lawmakers. Let's bring back empowerment. That's from Sheikh Gumi. Yes. He's saying they should yes. negotiate. Yeah. Yes. It goes back to the analogy of the lawmakers. Okay, what the, all the money we collect in consistency project, what have they been doing with it? Exactly. The, the, one lawmaker that, that couldn't dare talk on TV how much he collected. And he's been a lawmaker for so many years there. So what have they been doing with this money? They will argue with you, you know, if, if it's not because of what they've been doing, uh, things should be way worse. But the truth has to be said. The politicians in those areas have failed. So how can we speedily bring empowerment back without also stealing the money with government bureaucracy? We've set up a Northeast Development Commission. What has that done? We allocate money to the Northeast Development Commission. How well has that helped? Okay. Secondly, the war economy, a lot of people are benefiting from it. And look at it. Do you want to calculate how much has been collected in ransom in the last 10 years in this country? That money should be a sizable part of Nigeria's budget. God knows how much will be paid. We don't support payment of ransom, but in the end, these things get paid. I mean, the Kankara kids, that was a quid pro quo. Let's not deceive ourselves. As we speak now, conversations are going on. But this So... But these bandits, and when you extend the conversation further, was there not a state in this country that former bandits people are people that are close to government? Were there not states in this country that the governor did a photo up with bandits? Are there not these same people that politicians use to execute elections? So when you look at this trail of how it comes around, everybody, elite class, should watch it. Right. Because we might pick a, a lot of people up. So are we ready to really flush out those people? Because it will come back to them. Right. Secondly, the force part of it. Yes, we can use force. But the truth about using force is, if you don't solve those prevalent problems that made those young people be recruited for terrorists in the first place, then your force will be a force that you just use a miss. All it's right. not today. Well said, Rufai, and this is what it will be always lamenting, saying that the first step we need to take in order to reduce insecurity in Nigeria is to pull people out of poverty. That when people is out of poverty, it reduces the insecurity in the country. To take action or to take force is okay, but we need to take the first step, which is pulling people out of poverty so that there will be no reoccurrence of this kind of a thing. Because after you have taken force and all that, these people, they're going to recruit new members. So my people, this is it. I would love you guys to leave your thoughts in the comment section. What do you think about what uh, Arise Team said here? Yeah, and if today is your first time, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thanks everyone for watching, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye-bye for now.